Alright, this is a question from me, T-Rex. I am truly in awe of Bob and his willingness to think outside the box and make great equipment while taking on tons of abuse with the blessing to audio. My question to him is, what are you running in your two-channel system and why? Now, I'm not talking about just the speakers and his amp. I'm talking about every single component in the chain from the circuit breaker to the speakers, everything. ICs, PCs, you know what that is, right? Interconnects, circuit cables, power cords. Power cords. Power supplies, room treatments, tubes, SS, both. Okay. Give it to me. What okay. Right now, I have uh, a, ch uh, a metallic burgundy Cherry 7. It's a silver 7 with 20 output tubes per channel. Four, four channels of amplifier, uh, no, two channels, but it has four chassis because it has two power supplies. A pair of cinema ribbons that I've been working on from the amplifier. Uh, the, inter the, uh, the interconnects from the amplifier to the loudspeaker is uh, pretty common wire. It's just thick, heavy gauge wire. And uh, from the preamp to the power amp, I really have a very expensive interconnect. Uh, I bought it a long time ago. And it's the only ex terribly expensive interconnect I've ever purchased, but I've carried it around with me. And I used to take it to shows so that I could demonstrate that I really believed in interconnects when I believed that it was important to believe in interconnects. Um, and um, so that's what I'm listening to. I love it. I mean, I just love to walk past my beautiful, expensive interconnects. I'm embarrassed to tell you how much they cost. They were, it was, they were obscene. They cost more than the whole system. <laughs> I don't think they make them anymore, and um, I have a I have a I have I have a turntable, and I have a, a, a cartridge that goes with the turntable. It's a uh, let's see if I, I bought it a long time ago. It was recommended by Harry Pierce. Now the name will come to me in a minute, uh, but he raved and raved and raved about it, and I just had to have it, so I bought it. I bought it in I bought it in Japan. It failed after I'm sidetracking, but that's okay. It failed after a couple of months. I thought, oh, I, I'm good at this. I'll fix it. So I tried to solder it back up where it broke, and I ruined it. So I, so I sent it back to, to Japan. I said, I'd like, I'd like you to please fix it for me. And they said, no, we're not going to fix it for you. You have to buy another one. And so I had to buy another cartridge. And it was so expensive. I, I, I was beside myself. They wouldn't even give me a, co a price break. So I, I ended up paying twice for that price. The second one didn't break, and I would never have tried to fix it myself at it. So uh, let's see, what else? I have a Carver CD player uh, for, my, for my CDs, and I have a C1, this is the preamp. My preamps, I alternate between a C1 and a C4000. That's my system. And that way I get to use sonic clock. What kind of power amp? Cherry 7s. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Big Cherry 7s. Metallic, they're metallic burgundy, actually metallic red cherry burgundy, and gloss black power transformers, gloss black output transformers with those big cast end bells that you see in the silver 7s. And we will be getting photos of those very shortly. That's right. I was, <laughs> I was planning to bring them, but I ran out of time getting them boxed up and everything. So how big is your listing? You know, it's about this big. It's about as big as the combined uh, volume of this room and that room together. The ceilings aren't as high. But actually, the ceilings are pretty high. It's a slightly vaulted ceiling. Next question. The light star. You built them. You engineered them. Now that you've had some time here at Carver Fest to actually listen to them, what are your impressions of your answer? I love the Light Star. Man, I love the Light Star. It has a tracking down converter. You know, and the the, uh, the Light Star version. I I named I came up with the name Light Star because I was driving by, I was driving along one night going home, and I came across this bar and it said we have the Starlight Room. I thought, that's a great name for an amplifier, Starlight. By the time I got home, though, Starlight seemed, sounded, started to sound funny to me. I kept repeating it over and over, so I just reversed the words to Light Star. And after repeating that over and over to myself in my head, that started to sound pretty cool. So 
Light Star stuck. That's how the Light Star came about. Speaking of Light Star, we have a gentleman here with a couple of questions. How many of the Light Star reference and reference 11 amps? That might be a typo. Reference 2 amps and direct preamps were made. Uh, about 4,000 light stars were made, and I don't know how many of the preamps were made. That was in its total lifespan. Okay. Quite a few light stars. Other than the matching light star reference amp, what other Carver slash Sunfire amps would make best with the Light Star Direct preamp. Say again? I'm sorry. I, uh, I lost my focus. I think the computer kind of screwed this up. <laughs> Other than the Light Star amp, what preamp would go good with the Light Star amp? Uh, uh, wait a minute. The Light Star preamp. Light Star preamp. Which amps would best work with the right Next question. Well, I know what he wants to know. That's from Jim. He wants to know which preamp. He wants to know other than the Light Star reference or to amp, would you recommend with with the Light Star preamp? What would be a good match with the Light Star preamp? Oh, uh, actually, any of any 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 of the carbon amplifiers or Sunfire amplifiers, even the phase amps, would be fine. And the reason is the output impedance of the preamp is very low. You know, it's less than, than 900 ohms. And the input impedance of all the amps that I've designed have been at least 100K. Um, and for a while they were 30K. And even that's fine, very fine. So any of them will be a perfect match. If you weren't with the Carver Corporation or Sunfire right now, uh, what technologies would your company be marketing or pursuing today for two-channel audio? Well, probably the uh, an amplifier from an amplifier perspective, very similar to the phase link. I mean, the uh, Sunfire one, which is which includes a tracking down converter, two channels, massive power supply, and uh, a speaker that would rep be represented something like uh, uh, an amazing or the AL3. Probably, it would be. Not, it wouldn't be nearly as wide. It might be only this wide, because it needs to have a small foot, put, footprint these days. People like, and also it makes an image better. So it would be something like that. Maybe it would be a pulsating pole. You know, very long pulsating pole that would be round and would pulsate. Have you ever been into a Best Buy or a Circuit City and just walked in there and listened to what they had to say and then talked to them just to fuck with them? <laughs> I walked in, yes. Talked to them, yes. But just to, with a no. <laughs>